Hey guys, today we're going to be installing the very popular Wise Camera Outdoors to see if it can withstand a Canadian winter. Wise cameras are marketed as indoor devices. Bringing it outdoors opens up a whole new world of opportunity for these cameras. Using a protective housing, I'll test out to see if it affects its Wi-Fi range. We'll also test its ability to withstand rain, snow, and temperatures of minus 30 degrees Celsius or minus 22 Fahrenheit. For my outdoor testing today, we'll be dressing up the WiseCam version 2 in a very special protective outdoor coat. These housings are available on Amazon for about $12 US, which is just under half the cost of a new camera. The purpose of the cover is not to make the camera completely waterproof or bulletproof, but rather to divert rain and snow away from the openings, which could cause internal damage. It's best to install the camera in a tucked away area, like in a greenhouse, under an eave or a door frame. The case will significantly help lower the risk of a surprise camera failure or lost footage when it's installed outdoors, exposed to the elements. I also bought the Wise camera on Amazon and links for everything seen here today are in the description below. So right off the bat, the housing is made out of plastic and it feels like pretty decent quality. The little sunshade is kind of too small to protect the sun from falling up on the lens, but it would definitely help if there was an overhead light, like in this example here. It also works great at diverting water away from the front of the camera. The mount does twist and swivel so you can install it in the desired direction. There's no glass in the housing, so the front of your camera, including the lens, photo cell light sensor, and mic, will be exposed. Glass would cause the camera's night vision lights to reflect back into the camera's lens. That's why there is no glass there. So let's get it installed by dropping the camera into the housing and plugging in the micro USB power cable. I'll attach the back with the included screws to give you a small screwdriver in case you don't have one of your own and some extra screws. There is no rubber seal and there's not a lot of overlap between the front and the back. On the back, this area which sticks off protects where the power cord exits the camera and then goes down and out the bottom of the case. The wire coating may deteriorate over time since it's exposed. Oh yeah, and somebody could come by with a pair of snips and cut the cable unless the camera is mounted out of reach or with some good zip ties, keeping the cord protected against the base. On the bottom of the case, there's a large hole. This will allow any possible condensation to dry. I can see how bugs over time will make a home in here, but we'll have to wait for the spring until that. The unit comes with some mounting screws and anchors. These are soft screws, they will strip easily, so you may want to use your own. Let's start off by testing to see if the housing reduces the camera's Wi-Fi range. Inside of my house, I'm using a Ubiquiti access point with a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signal. I've tested multiple areas outside my home up to 300 feet away or 94 meters with the camera covered and uncovered. Long story short, the housing made no difference in the Wi-Fi range, but I will be doing a future video just on the maximum Wi-Fi range of the WISE cameras. Next, we're going to install the camera here over my front door. If this was a permanent location, I'd need to route the power cable through the soffit or down the siding and then into my house. Let's do a quick mic and speaker test. All right, guys, so you can obviously hear. All right, guys, so you can obviously hear the train in the background. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? And we are now at 25 feet. And this is 10 feet away. In this location, I could even turn the camera around and have it pointing towards my front door. Or I could buy another and have two cameras there since they're so perfectly priced. Let's jump over to my next install location here on my gazebo looking at my house. Just an awesome picture. Before going any farther, let's check out some time lapse footage. Since it rarely rains here in the winter, I'm going to do a water test, but with the help of my garden hose. And today it's above freezing, so I shouldn't have any trouble getting the water through. After about a minute of some aggressive water hosing, the camera still works, but I'm actually surprised I didn't damage the exposed mic or photo cell with that much water force. A few drips of water have entered, but there's no signs of water around the speaker or power cord area. 
Before exposing the cameras to those frigid temperatures we have outside right now, let's bring out the thermal imager. When running the cameras inside and with the case on, when I removed it from the case, it was actually quite warm, 41 degrees Celsius or 106 Fahrenheit. And I left the other camera running all day with no case and it reached 36 degrees Celsius or 97 Fahrenheit. So the housing will insulate the camera, but only very slightly. So here is my last install location, my back step. It's been sitting here now for a few days and it's almost minus 22 Fahrenheit or minus 30 outside. Remember the camera is only rated for zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. The thermal camera actually stops giving temperatures at minus 30. It was minus 30 and below all week and the wise cam performed beautifully. The camera's temperature is slightly above the outside temperature and all of the functionality worked as expected, including the mic and speaker. All right, guys, this is a uh, nighttime test. It's uh, minus 35 degrees Celsius outside. And it's uh, quick mode <coughs> as you take my breath away. While I was testing the camera case during a snowfall, I had several notifications of motion because snow was passing in front of the IR night vision lights. Just watch, as soon as a flake of snow flies by, the camera picks it up. Impressive, but I turned down the sensitivity, which helped a little bit. But to turn off those notifications, I actually switched it over to human detection, and that solved the problem. So back here in the studio, let's do a speaker test in the controlled sound environment to see if the housing impacts the speaker quality. Here's a sample of the sound with the cover off. Here's the sound quality with the cover off. And here's a sample with the cover on. This is what the sound is like when we have the cover on. Cover off. Cover on. Cover off. Cover on. So in conclusion, the wise cameras continue to amaze me given their price point. The protective housing did not interfere with the Wi-Fi range and was able to help guard against the elements. We found that the WISE cameras can operate in frigid temperatures with no issues. The case does protect against the snow and rain and is definitely an asset if you plan on using the WISE cameras outdoors so you don't run into any unexpected camera failures or lost footage. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.